Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's that time of the month, time to assess the current GPU market and look at what on earth is going on to start the year that is 2022. Throughout last year, GPU prices were the worst they've ever been, but there is some hope that this year will be better in that regard. And to be fair, prices did get better throughout the second half of 2021 compared to the devastating peaks of May. Everyone, of course, wants to know if GPU prices are gonna be better in 2022 and specifically when they will get better. Not sure I'll be able to provide that information for you just yet, but we will get into the pricing breakdown a bit later in this video to see how January is playing out. But we still living in a world where many things are affecting GPU pricing from ongoing supply chain and logistics issues globally to cryptocurrency mining still being rather profitable. So any adjustments to GPU pricing are gonna be pretty slow. To start this video, I wanted to take a look at the current market situation for a couple of new releases that have occurred up until this point, namely the RTX 2060 12 gigabyte and the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte from Nvidia. Both GPUs were launched onto the market with little fanfare from Nvidia themselves and no firm MSRPs, creating a situation where Nvidia can extract the absolute maximum they possibly can from the AIB partners they are selling these GPUs to. This in turn leads to high real stream prices for GPU buyers. The GeForce RTX 2060 12 gigabyte technically launched on December 7th, but since then it's been a hard to find product with limited supply. A month and a half on from its release, it's very clear that this GPU is not the savior for mid-range GPU supply issues that some were hoping it would be. It simply isn't available in high enough quantities to begin with, let alone at a reasonable price. Most companies, including all the major AIBs, do have RTX 2060 12 gigabyte models available. But when you head over to Newegg, the only units you can buy are from third-party sellers at ridiculously inflated prices, many of which are shipping directly from China, such as this MSI Ventus model. Pricing here begins at $740 US, which makes no sense given Newegg will sell you the same Ventus variant as a 2060 6 gigabyte card for $620. So based on the performance differences, there is basically zero gamers that should be interested in that product. And $620 is hardly a good price for a 2060 six gigabyte card, even in the current market. And this sort of pricing discrepancy is pretty similar in other countries as well. Here in Australia, you're looking at $850 Australian for the cheapest in-stock RTX 2060 six gigabyte versus $1,000 for the 12 gigabyte model. And you just wouldn't pay that premium. Really the only way this GPU was gonna improve the market was if Nvidia were pumping them out to increase supply and disrupt pricing in the mid-range, forcing prices to come down. But instead, the opposite has happened. Supply to retail markets has been limited and prices are even worse than existing GPUs. So it's best just to forget this card even exists. As we mentioned in our previous market update and in our RTX 2060 12 gigabyte review, we've been told from several sources that the 2060 12 gigabyte is mostly being produced and sold to miners. Then comes the story of the GeForce RTX 3080 12 gigabyte, a GPU we described as a shameless cash grab that doesn't help gamers whatsoever in our review. And surprise, surprise, with a better look at the availability and pricing of this GPU in the week since its launch, it indeed looks very much like a cash grab from Nvidia to reset pricing on the RTX 3080, increase their profit margins, and just profit more from the current market situation. By not providing an official MSRP for this product, they can raise the bomb price they sell this GPU package to AIBs, raking in more from each GA102 die compared to selling them as RTX 3080 10 gigabyte cards. I'm not going to go over again in detail why this is bad for gamers and how it doesn't help anything. You can get our full thoughts on that situation in our 3080 12GB review. Spoiler alert, the way to help gamers would have been to just supply the existing RTX 3080 10GB card in greater quantities at the previously advertised MSRP. Instead, I want to look at where the new 12GB variant is sitting in the market right now. Like with the 2060 12 gig, there are only a handful of 3080 12 gig models available on store shelves right now. The majority of available RTX 3080 offerings are the older 10 gigabyte card. Some people have suggested that the launch of the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte card will see the older 10 gig card discontinued. And while I don't want to rule out that possibility, there's no evidence right now to suggest that has happened. It's simply too early in the lifespan of this new variant, and there's plenty of existing 3080 stock to be sold before we can gauge what card is being resupplied in the highest quantities, though it's definitely something we'll be keeping an eye on. Pricing for the RTX 3080 12GB is disgusting at retail a week after launch as expected, 
Newegg are sold out of these GPUs, but the cheapest listings have been around the $1,230 to $1,300 US mark, higher than the supposed MSRP of the RTX 3080 Ti. Meanwhile, we have 10GB models going for just over $1,100 in the Newegg shuffle, and most 3080 Ti's starting around $1,500. So as expected, the 12GB variant is basically straddling that middle point between the existing 3080 and the 3080 Ti. Similar story in other markets. I'll focus here briefly on Australia and the ASUS ROG Strix model. We're looking at $2,600 Aussie for the 10 gig model, $2,900 for the 12 gig 3080, and then $3,200 for the 3080 Ti model. MSI Supreme X is another example, $2,400 for the 10 gig 3080, $2,600 for the 12 gig 3080, and then $2,900 for the 3080 Ti. Again, the two latter cards, the 12 gig 3080, and the 3080 Ti were both announced well after the original RTX 3080 and clearly are being sold at a much higher price. And of course, all of that silicon could be being sold as regular RTX 3080s if Nvidia really did want to help out gamers and fulfill their launch day orders and keep to what they advertised. But they're a company, they're not your friend, they don't care about you, and these subsequent GPU releases are clearly all about maximizing profits. Are there any positives at all to take out of these GPU launches? Well, there aren't many if I'm honest, but it has been good to see these new releases not just sell out instantly at a lot of retailers. The reception from gamers over the 3080 12 gig has been lukewarm at best, and at the advertised prices, they're just a, they're not flying off shelves. In fact, these days at a lot of retailers outside of the US, cards have been available at high prices for months and months now. This new 12 gig launch is just another card joining that pile. The lack of an attempt to create an MSRP or sell GPUs at the MSRP has basically caused that situation, mostly for the worse. What is the current situation with the scalper market? Well, as we know, the crypto market and the GPU scalper market are closely linked. GPU prices are correlated to the profitability of mining on those GPUs at a given time, factoring in a bit of a lag as the market adjusts, predictions on time to profitability for buying a card, and so on. The price of Ethereum, and most other coins for that matter, have continued to fall throughout January, continuing a trend that began in the first week of November. Ethereum difficulty as a general trend continues to rise month on month, but at a slower pace than in the middle parts of 2021, so there has been somewhat of a cool off in adding new hardware for mining. All up, when we look at what to mine's profitability data, most GPUs have fallen in mining profitability by around 15% month on month, which is a higher decline in profitability than last month. When mining profitability falls over a prolonged period, so do the prices of GPUs on the scalper market. Using our tried and true eBay completed listings metric for the same week in every month, new Nvidia GPU prices have fallen by 4% on average, with every GPU in the current lineup seeing a small price reduction. I should note here that the RTX 3080 12 gig hasn't hit the scalper market in a significant enough way yet to be included here, though we'll be looking at adding it in in future months. Across the data we've been collecting for months now, January has definitely been one of the better months for Nvidia GPUs. Prices were flat on average in December, increased 6% month on month in November, and declined slightly in October. What we're seeing in January is the largest decline in current gen NVIDIA GPU prices since July, and for some products like the RTX 3070 and RTX 3060, street prices are close to their lowest point in the period we've been capturing data. Inflation still remains high, most GPUs are still double their MSRP, but I think it's important to mention the positives as well, like how GPU prices have fallen significantly since their peak in May. Also, since I've been collecting this data, January had one of the highest rates of listings going unsold for NVIDIA GPUs, suggesting that some of the high prices being seen on the scalper market are being less tolerated now than in previous months, which should lead to further price reductions in the future if that trend continues. AMD GPUs also saw a fall in prices, although the volume of AMD cards sold this month was disappointingly low compared to previous months, which might be a supply issue or listings simply being overpriced. Like on the NVIDIA side, every AMD card saw price drops, though the average drop of 3% is slim, slightly lower than NVIDIA. Despite only seeing a small drop, AMD GPUs continue to be better bang for buck options than their NVIDIA counterparts from a performance standpoint. For example, the 6700 XT at $870 is much cheaper than the RTX 3070's $1080 price, and actually a bit lower than the 3060 Ti, which sits at $935. The average price drop for AMD GPUs this month was similar to in December, however in prior months there was a slight rising trend across AMD's lineup. Like on the Nvidia side, prices are well down from their peak in May, but still inflated, 
we're looking at about 80% over the MSRP right now. It'll be interesting to see how the upcoming RX 6500 XT impacts this, which we'll begin tracking next month. As for the used market, the trend for pricing here is very similar to the new market. For NVIDIA's GeForce 20 series, the prices of all GPUs fell, though some by only a very small margin. The overall decline was 4% on average, which is a decent to small result, though we're yet to see Turing GPUs return to the MSRP in a lot of cases. The closest we have right now is the RTX 2080, sitting at $730 for a used GPU. The GeForce 16 series saw a respectable price reduction of 6% month on month, after a 2% reduction last month and a 5% increase in November. As these are still NVIDIA's current generation mainstream GPUs, prices are heavily inflated as you can see, though it's good to finally see some movement in GTX 1650 prices. NVIDIA are set to launch the RTX 3050 later this month at a $250 MSRP, so you would expect this to have an impact on street prices for this market, as we expect it will fall somewhere around $500 new in terms of a real price. Pascal GPUs from the GeForce 10 series also saw price reductions, except for the highest tier models where pricing was flat. The GTX 1060 3GB saw a big price reduction, possibly in response to the impending RX 6500 XT, though it's still being sold used for its launch MSRP of $200 US. The GTX 1060 6GB is the only Pascal card currently being sold above its original price, which goes to show its continued popularity. Some of the clearest evidence of a price correction due to a decrease in mining profitability comes from the Radeon RX 5000 series. These cards are very good at mining, and the insane level of price inflation was very much attributable to their mining performance. But the more closely a GPU is linked to mining, the more heavily the price fluctuates with changes in profitability, and that's certainly the case here with an average decrease in GPU prices of 10% this month. Cards like the 5700 XT are still stupidly expensive for gaming, but it has seen a 9% drop this month after an 11% drop last month. That's pretty good. A similar impact was also seen for AMD's older GPUs. Cards like Vega and Polaris were also highly sought after for mining, and we're looking at a 10% drop in pricing this month as well. The two 4GB cards in this chart, the 584GB and the 574GB, are going to be interesting competition for the RX 6500 XT at its supposed $200 MSRP. I still wouldn't recommend the 8GB cards for gamers right now, the GTX 1060 6GB is a much better choice, but prices are falling for these sorts of GPUs. Overall, there's been mixed news this month in the GPU market. The launch of the RTX 2060 12GB and RTX 3080 12GB have been highly disappointing in terms of improving supply and pricing for gamers. They've really done nothing at all in that area and are very overpriced right now. There are a few more GPU launches scheduled for this month, like the RX 6500 XT and the RTX 3050. It'll be interesting to see how they impact the market, but we're expecting the result to be better than NVIDIA's two cash grab cards. The good news for those following the GPU market closely is that real street prices dropped month on month in January on the scalper market. In addition, we observed a higher than usual amount of unsold listings and quite good availability in retail stores, at inflated prices of course. Some GPUs are approaching their lowest real prices in about a year. Now prices still aren't great, but there are some positives to take away. The main driver of these declines is the cooling crypto market. This current trend of pricing drops and a decrease in mining profitability for popular coins has been ongoing for a few months now, one of the longest periods of cooling in the past 12 months. Like everything crypto, it's completely unclear whether this trend will continue next month, and anyone that says they can answer that question accurately is kidding themselves, but if the trend does continue, GPU prices will also keep falling. It's really that simple. We'll continue monitoring prices for as long as makes sense, but for now, yeah, that's pretty much it for this GPU pricing update for the month of January. I know you guys, at least some of you guys, have been finding these videos useful, so hopefully this one is another useful video for you and your GPU purchasing I don't know, are you going to buy a GPU anytime soon? I'm not sure. Let us know in the comments below. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in supporting the channel directly, we do have our Patreon or Floatplane accounts. You'll find links to those in the description below. You can support our independent testing. You can also get access to perks like our Discord community and all sorts of other great stuff. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.